We arrived in Dayton, Ohio to visit family and to check out a few of the local digs, which included an eatery that Karen and I had been to before called the Blueberry Cafe, which, by the way, serves some of the best breakfast dishes around. A few days later, I tried my luck at fishing once again, but this time at a stocked pond called Catfisherman's Paradise. Hey everybody, we are in the great state of Ohio and we're gonna do some fishing. We are here at the Catfisherman's Paradise and this is just a little bit, I believe it's gonna be east of Dayton, Ohio. And as you know from the previous video or discussion that uh, Karen and I actually kind of changed our plans from going into Yellowstone National Park. We went out here to Dayton and uh, we're gonna do some fishing. This is the first chance I've had to do fishing since uh, I've uh, gone RVing full time. That's not to say that it really was um, somebody else's fault. It was really my fault. There were some opportunities to go fishing up in Flathead Lake in Montana, but uh, one reason or another, <laughs> it didn't quite work out and I'll take all the blame for that. But uh, we are here in Ohio. We're gonna do some catfishing. I'm gonna kind of pan this around here a little bit. And there is several private lakes here. There's a little pond here. There's a couple more over here. And there are supposed to be um, literally some 50 to 100 pound catfish here. I have never in my life fished for a catfish that big, but we're gonna you know, keep my fingers crossed that we catch one and see what I can show you. I think those people over there caught another, another catfish. See how big that one is. Uh, maybe a eight or 10 pounder. Okay, so we, uh, we uh, paid our uh, admittance, fee, uh, admittance fee, which was $23 per person, and we are out here at pond number four. And if you can see the people over there, we got some people cross us fishing. It's the second fish they caught. I think both of them been like, look like about eight or 10 pounders. But um, Chad set us out. Chad's, I think he's probably the owner of the location, but uh, manager, owner, what do you think Chad is, the owner? A partial owner. Anyways, again, we're here with Chris, and Chris is taking me out here. And one of the things I found out about uh, fishing, uh, Cat Fisherman's Paradise is that apparently there are people that come from all over the surrounding states to come here. This is quite the catfishing pond. But we are going to zoom in here and show you what we're using for bait. Now, this is something I've never seen before, and Chris, you've never seen this no. either. What is that? It, it is, looks like a caterpillar. Yeah, I guess some, he said it was some He's kind a tree of caterpillar. Warm, a tree worm or something. It looks but, like a caterpillar. But he said literally, this is what Chad, the owner, we believe is the owner of uh, uh, Catfisherman's Paradise. He said literally, you could basically gonna toss it out, well, maybe a little further than that. So basically you're gonna toss it out about there and he goes that's as far as you got to go and he says you're gonna you you should have some pretty good luck um it is going to be quite interesting for me because i'm not really equipped set up to catch a very large catfish if you look at chris's rod here this one is definitely set up for a large cat my little pole over here is set up basically for panfish or for maybe some bass so if i catch bass i'm sorry if i catch catfish it's going to be quite the fight it's going to be quite the show on video but uh he's going to throw his out and uh we're going to see what we do here that's about as far as it goes here there were several stock ponds with some monster catfish and almost immediately i hooked one i only had light tackle and the catfish i hooked i estimated to be between 10 and 14 pounds it would have been the biggest catfish i ever caught well, sure enough, he got off the line. Oh, yeah. Wow. There's a goldfish in there. Wow. That's a pretty good one. Let's tire him out here a little bit. Wow. Come on, girl. Let's get tired. That's right. Oh, he wants to run again. Again, with the with 15 pound test. <laughs> I don't want to play around with it too much. Yeah, I'll it looks like it's out. Oh, oh shit! That's exactly. Oh. That's exactly why you got to play them out 15 pound test. Oh. Damn it! Oh well. Hey, at least we had one. It was pretty good size. Let me take your My son-in-law Chris was able to reel in his, but in the end, the worst day fishing is better than the best day working, and it did get me out of some chores on the tilde. All right, good deal. A few days later, we headed north to Fort Wayne to visit more family, this time my sister Joan and her husband Steve. If you remember from the previous videos, Steve and Joan had joined us in Miami and St. Lucia. Along the way, we hit some pretty bad weather and even had to pull off at a truck stop along the way until it cleared. Steve has lived in the Fort Wayne area for many years and he quickly became our unofficial guide at taking us on a tour of the area. 
Hi, Albie. That's Albie. Hey, if you guys look at this beautiful scenery behind me, um, which really is amazing, we are in Fort Wayne, Indiana. We're going to be going out with my brother-in-law, Steve Scherf, and if you might remember him from some previous videos back when we were in Miami, but he's going to do our, be our guide here in Fort Wayne. But it is just really, really beautiful here. It's so green and so lush. Got some bird feeders and some flowers. Anyways, come along, and uh, we're going to go explore Fort Wayne. Okay. We're here with uh, Steve Scherf, and he is our official tour, gu tour guide for uh, Fort Wayne. Steve, how many years have you lived here? 50. 50 years. And um, lots of unique things about Fort Wayne. I, last time I was here, we went to an auto museum, which was really amazing. It wasn't in Fort Wayne, but Auburn pretty Auburn Court Duesenberg Museum right. in Auburn. In Au Auburn, which is very close. But uh, we're going to do a tour here. One of the things I did not know is that... Um, Johnny Appleseed, if you if Johnny Appleseed lived here and actually passed away and died here. Real person. Real person. The name was John Chapman. He was born in Maine mm -hmm. in 1774. And he died after passing through Pennsylvania, Ohio, Indiana, and going into Illinois. He came back to Indiana because at that time, Indiana had a, in, a, in order to encourage Western movement of the country. Uh, the government provided a way that if you planted trees and kept them for four years, you could claim a property. When uh, Chapman died here, he owned half a dozen properties in this area. Uh, what he could do and did do was plant trees, monitor them for a few years, and then after the time period lapsed, he could sell the property. Mm -hmm. So he supported himself quite nicely. Uh, what I didn't know about him was that he was also uh, a devout Christian, but it was kind of a fringe part of Christianity, but he was a great spokesman for it and uh, proselytized all over the country. Uh, so when he died here, he was, comfortable and wealthy and uh, he lived a long long life yeah the only thing i really remember at johnny appleseed really was just i know there's a movie about it. in fact i wanted to watch the movie it was made a long time ago but i wanted to watch the movie just before we get this clip but unfortunately i didn't do that but um, the only thing i remember at johnny appleseed i think was in junior high or maybe even elementary school it was about this guy and he walked around the country and he basically planted apple seeds and kind of a happy-go-lucky guy, but there was a little bit of profit in it for him. Yeah, yeah. he definitely was doing it. He wasn't doing it to spread apple trees. There was He was doing it for some financial gain, which is fine. That's what people do. And uh, people who knew him spoke of him very highly. Yeah, yeah. He was it, a nice, per, right. nice person. Now, what people don't know is that the apple trees he planted were native, hardy trees. So mm -hmm. some of them are still alive, but the apples were terrible. <laughs> they were called spitters. You took a bite of one and you spit it out because it was terrible. But what it was good for was making apple cider. Apple cider. and Hard probably cider. Hard cider. Yeah, not just like, you know, for little 10-year-old kids. We're talking no. about hard adult no. apple cider. Yeah, Mott's didn't bottle it. Right, yeah, this was not Mott's. Anyway, so we're here actually at the grave site of Johnny Appleseed. And we're going to show you some clips here. But this is actually Johnny Appleseed Park. In fact, the RV park Karen and I are staying in is Johnny Appleseed RV Park owned by the city of Fort Worth. And it's Fort really, Wayne. or Fort Wayne. I keep saying, I'm sorry. If I say Fort Worth, I, I meant Fort Wayne. But, um really a huge park and not a lot of people out here one of the things a few people here or there but for the size and expanse of the park there's not too many people out i'm not sure what because of covid 19 or whatever but yeah, yeah not a lot of people oh covid yeah, yeah. Usually, anyway usually there would be a lot more people here yeah so anyway so let's go to, we're going to give you a little tour here of the grave site that we're going to walk around the park for a little bit
you. Yeah. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this video about Fort Wayne and a little bit about Ohio and some of my fishing exploits. If you did, please hit subscribe on YouTube. And remember, at Blue Line RV Adventures, we got your six.